If you've seen this channel before, you'll know that I talk a lot about APS-C cameras or crop censored cameras. Uh, I don't think that these are necessarily better or worse than full frame cameras, but there's a couple of reasons why I choose to use APS-C over full frame when it comes to videography. If you're not familiar with the phrase APS-C or Super 35, what I'm referring to is the size of the sensor. In some of these more budget-friendly cameras, there is a smaller sensor than you might find in something like the A7 series of cameras, a full-frame camera, which is going to have a larger sensor on the inside than you would find on cheaper cameras, typically. And that's true across the board of many cameras, right? This isn't a Sony thing. Uh, you can also find them in cinema cameras. So this is a Zcam E2S6 Super 35 6K sensor. You can also get an F6, the full-frame equivalent. Um, and there are pros and cons to both. But when I talk about APS-C or Super 35, it's the same sort of thing, just referring to the size of the sensor. So as I said, I use a lot of APS-C cameras, whether it's uh, cameras like this, the ZV-10, which is my top recommendation for any beginner videography or photographer, whether it's cinema cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K Pro or 6K, the what you're watching right now, the Canon C200, uh, the Zcam E2S6, loads and loads and loads of uh, Super 35 or APS-C cinema cameras uh, and, and I absolutely love them. Now I'm not opposed to full frame, you see I, I use full frame, I've got a Sony a7R 3 right here, a beast of a 42 megapixel uh, full frame camera, it takes incredible photos, I'm a huge fan of the Sony a7 III uh, and I use those for photography. Um, but when it comes to video there's actually a few reasons why I prefer APS-C over full frame. Now I'm not going to come out here and just say that as a blanket statement APS-C is better or worse than full frame. They are both great and for different reasons. I tend to go for APS-C for a few reasons. Firstly, the cost. APS-C cameras are a whole lot cheaper than full frame cameras. Not only the camera bodies themselves, but the lenses as well. Recently Sony released the Sony uh, A6700, which is a 4K 120p uh, sort of hybrid of the FX30 and a photography A6600 based camera um, and to get those sort of specs in a full frame camera you're looking at something like the ZV-E1 or the FX3 or the A7S3 which are you know at least double the price but not only are the bodies cheaper uh, the lenses are cheaper as well one of my favorite things about APS-C cameras are that you can get some amazing lenses for a whole lot less than you would get for a full frame camera for example here we have like a, a Sure anamorphic lens a 1.33 times squeeze and it's a phenomenal little lens for what five or six hundred dollars you can get an anamorphic lens for your camera. That's, a, that's incredible. To be able to get something that'll cover full frame with the same sort of specs, 35 millimeter f1.8, you're looking at a couple of thousand dollars at least. Uh, or take these Sigma Contemporary series lenses. This is a 16 millimeter f1.4. And to get the equivalent for a full frame camera, the 24 millimeter f1.4, you're talking $800. Uh, or take this for example, this is a Seven Artisans cinema lens, uh, and it opens all the way up to T1.05, and it's an absolutely amazing lens. And to get a lens that would cover full frame at T1.05 would cost you at least four times the price of this lens. So this was only four to five hundred dollars per lens, which is an absolute bargain. And then there's lenses like the one that you're watching right now. This is the Sigma 18 to 35. It's a legendary lens, uh, 18 to 35 zoom lens that it opens up all the way to f 1.8. So to me, cost is one of the big things. Now that doesn't mean that all APS-C cameras are cheap. For example, the Red Komodo is an APS-C camera and it is not cheap, it's about $5,000. But what you get for your money is astronomically more than what you might get with a full frame camera. Now, another reason I actually like APS-C cameras over full frame cameras is actually what most people tend to equate as a problem with these cameras. The main problem that people have with these sensors is one, there's a crop, and two, the background blur or the bokeh is not quite as uh, pronounced as you would get with a full frame camera. It's not quite as blurry. But those two things are actually strengths for me. I, I very rarely, very rarely shoot any wider than a 20 or 24 millimeter uh, a full frame equivalent. So for me, that's a 13 to a 16 millimeter, which are pretty easy to come by these days for, for Sony. And when it comes to the telephoto end, I actually much prefer shooting with a much more compressed image. And that's actually easier to achieve with an APS-C camera because of the crop. So I actually quite like the crop for the most part. And when it comes to the background blur, uh, most of the time when I'm doing narrative film work, I'm using cinema lenses like this one. 
Uh, and at T1.05, if you were to stick this on a full frame camera, you're not going to get focus. You're just not going to get it right. It's going to be incredibly difficult to nail focus. Whereas when you lose some of that background blur, it's actually easier to get more in focus in the frame, uh, even though you can still open it up and let the same amount of light into your sensor. So yeah, you might not be able to get an F1.4 equivalent background blur, but which in photography I think is fantastic. But in video, I rarely want to be that wide open. I kind of prefer to be at that 2.8 range of a full frame equivalent, which uh, I think an F1.4 is the equivalent of like a F2.1 or something like that. So the statement that just sort of teaches that you have to buy full frame, I think is just a myth. And it's something that I get wrapped up in a lot. I wrestle a lot, especially since I've started making YouTube videos with the compulsion to buy full frame cameras, because I think, well, that's what all the YouTubers say you have to buy. Therefore, that's what I got to buy either to make content about it or uh, just because everyone says that it's better. But then when I look at all of the content that I've made, the music videos that I've made, the commercials that I've done and, and, and all of the work that I've done on APS-C cameras compared to some uh, cheap cheaper full frame cameras, I much prefer that image. And I was able to get it for a better price and charge more because of the features that that camera came with. So I'm not saying that APS-C is better than full frame, but for me, I typically use it a lot more than full frame when it comes to video. I still use my A7R3, my A7 III for photography. My wife uses them all the time uh, and they are phenomenal cameras. They're great. I'm not saying anything bad against full frame, but what I am saying is for most people, if you don't have the budget for full frame, uh, don't buy it. Just go with APS-C. You're gonna get some incredible, incredible content uh, whether it's photos, videos, anything you need from an APS-C camera. And I know that you might get caught up in the hype. You might be told by all the YouTubers, all the, all the sort of the big wigs in the, in the photography world that say you have to go full frame. That's just not true. You can produce incredible content. There are people making documentary films for decades on APS-C cameras, and it's always been good enough. And if you want to know any more about how to get good quality out of these sorts of cameras, hit the subscribe button. While you're down there, maybe hit the like button if you've enjoyed the video. Drop a comment down below. I want to hear your thoughts about why you would choose full frame, micro four thirds, super 35, whatever they are. Drop that comment down below. I really appreciate all of you for doing so, and I hope you have a wonderful day.